And welcome everyone back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val and I'm going to be your host this morning for an epic illustration stream. And I'm joined by my new friend, Eva. Eva, how are you this morning? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm super pumped for this segment. I've been looking forward to it Me fondly. <laughs> um, before we dive into everything, because I want to pass things over to you, let you introduce yourself and all that good stuff. Um, but I'd like to remind folks in the chat, um, if you're watching over on YouTube, come on over to Behance, because that is where we are going to be reading the chat. That's where the party's happening. I see Robert is over here already. RB, Misty, Anki, Viola, it's good to see you. Wade Acuff is in the chat, um, which leads me into my next point, which is if you would like to start your day off with some awesome design uh, in Photoshop, Wade is hosting the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and you should tune in, uh, scrub up on your skills, learn some, some cool stuff in the Photoshop. Um, it's a good time. It's awesome. Uh, uh, every time he, uh, he does these things, uh, we're doing some pretty cool themes as well. Saw some cool water designs happening um, on the stream. So tune in for that. Uh, General Kenobi is in the chat. It's good to see you. Hello there. It's good to see you, friends. Um, but yeah, let's uh, kind of dive into a little bit more about you, Eva. Let's uh, introduce yourself for those of you who are unfamiliar with you and your work. Who are you? What do you create? And what is your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> good well, stuff. <laughs> start with the last question. My yeah. my favorite pizza topping is just extra cheese. So Th Same. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We're best friends. Did we yeah. just become best friends? Are we in the so. Step Brothers movie? Yeah, we this did. Is... <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm an artist. I'm an illustrator. I don't really know which one to choose because I feel like, you know, the word illustrator is so vague. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an animator. I'm an anchor. I'm a digital art person. Um, so yeah, I live in Brooklyn, New York, and um, I've been making art since, I guess, about 2014 or so. Um, and a lot of my work is inspired by the music I listen to. I actually went mm. to music school for my undergrad. Um, and then later on, I went to FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology, to study illustration for a year. And since then, I've just been freelancing and working. So I guess I could show you a little bit of my work. Um, this is some of the commissioned work that I've done. Um, a lot of stuff related to mental health, futurism, um, a lot of things related to, you know, psychology, technology. Mm. Um, I love drawing people. That's one of my favorite things to draw. Um, yeah. And then I do a lot of traditional work. And I think that the favorite, one of the favorite things for me about um, Photoshop and Fresco is that I can make my work feel just as traditional as it would on paper in a digital form. So mm. I try to like embody my traditional work um, in you know my digital platform so that's my traditional work and then this is some more of my digital stuff which is kind of what we're going to be doing today i'm really excited to share the piece i'm going to be working with you guys and yeah i can't wait to jump in yeah i'm i'm pumped with this i'm very um uh kind of intrigued by you said that you studied music um do you are you a singer are you do you play instruments or um i'd love to know more about that yeah, I um, so I went to Berkeley College of Music for a flute. Initially, I played the flute. Me too. Um, no <laughs> way. I think Seriously? everyone played the flute at some point, but you yeah. really play the flute. That's awesome. I do. I play the flute and the alto saxophone. Oh wow! Same fingers. Same fingerings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yes. We were vibing, wins. everyone. We um, were vibing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So I went for flute, and then I actually studied music composition because I was like. <laughs> I play so much already that I was like, I really want to get the most out of this high tuition fee. It's <laughs> <and study laughs> yeah. something I don't know how to do. Um, and then when I graduated, I was just like, draw. I found myself drawing all the time during school. And I think 
you know, working a full-time job after school and trying to make a living was, was difficult. And so I found myself drawing a lot just like as a form of self-therapy. And then I was like, wait, I actually really love drawing. Um, and I started doing it more seriously, I guess, when I hit like 17. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was practicing all throughout, um, college, but yeah, I guess at that point was like the turning point for me when I started posting my work on Instagram and being like, you know what, I actually really like doing this and people are receiving it well. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And here we are. Awesome. Maybe. Now we're on Adobe Live. <laughs> now we're on Adobe Live, baby. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to be working on um, for today and tomorrow? I, I got behind the scenes peaks, you know, so I kind of saw a little bit of a sketch going on, but I would love for you to show it off and tell everybody a little bit about what we've got planned. Yeah. So, um, this is my Adobe Fresco. Um, we're going to be, this is a sketch, right? So I did this sketch in Adobe Fresco and then I brought it back in after I was happy with it, did a few thumbnails and I chose this one. Um, and yeah, we're basically just going to be inking this and then coloring it tomorrow. So today we're inking mm -hmm. uh, in fresco. And then tomorrow we're bringing the inked version into um, Photoshop. And that's where we're going to color it. So okay. yeah, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But I'm hoping that I can give people some tips on how to make their work feel more traditional, um, how to make their own brushes, how to work with and get used to drawing digitally in a way that feels traditional and doesn't feel so sort of like um, digital, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and I just got this brand new iPad that I've been saving up for, so I'm really excited to try. <laughs> I'm really excited to do this. New tech, yeah, I'm, I'm excited been... for you. Um, I would love to know, like as we kind of get started here, you said um, <laughs> that uh, you were talking about obviously making your digital work feel a little more traditional. Um, and then you mentioned making your own brushes. So is that something you do um, and then you use those brushes continuously that you've made or do you make brushes for individual projects? That's a great question. Um, I don't use them for, <clears throat> I don't make them for individual projects. I mostly make them in general and then I just use those throughout. So I'll have like the same three or four brushes that I've made and then, um, or that I've sort of tweaked of a brush that was actually already there and I just changed the setting so much that it's like a different brush. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I'll, I'll usually do that in Photoshop. Okay. Um, yeah, but I also really love like all these brushes that you can import in Fresco. It's just like, there's so many options. It's insane how many yeah. free, free brushes you get. I was just looking at it this weekend to catch up on what I'm going to say today and like looking through and I was like, wait, this has way more than I thought. <laughs> yeah. And it's so easily accessible to through Fresco. I feel like I kind of explore through there and snag a new brush pack like every yeah. so often. It's just really cool. Um, which brushes are we going to be using today? I'm interested to see um, because specifically with the uh, desire to make the digital uh, piece feel traditional I wonder mm -hmm. if you're going to be using like textured brushes charcoals are like a favorite mm. of mine I always like to use like texture brushes so I'm excited to see like what you gravitate towards for a yeah. project like this yeah definitely well we'll we'll go into it but I'm I'm probably going to stick to something really basic in the inking category at first mm -hmm. and then after I get like all the line work down then I like to make um a stippling brush and okay. I know Fresco also makes a really good stippling brush um, and a hatching brush and we're going to be sort of trying to mimic the brushes or I guess in this case nibs that you would use in an inking situation mm -hmm. um, traditionally trying to mimic those kind of techniques so um, you know stippling hatching cross hatching all that good stuff um, awesome yeah and I was just I actually just imported imported um, this brush by um, Adobe the the Kaya Webster cross hatching brushes get nice. out of here they're amazing yeah. I also noticed that you have the True Grit Texture Supply packs in there too. That is one of my favorite resources. Seriously, all they're of you free. folks in the chat, yes, and yeah. there. And I actually have gone in and bought a few of the packs. It is like yeah. some of the best spent money creatively that I've mm -hmm. done because they are 
just so unique and so authentic in the the texture and um yeah true grit texture supply is an excellent resource so if yeah. any of you are looking for not only brushes but like i i also get texture packs it's just like a big um pack of like tiff textures to overlay in photoshop yep. i love them um, yeah. and highly recommend them yeah or they also have like those paper textures too you can mm -hmm. buy like different paper textures that you can do afterwards to make it feel more traditional i always overlay my art on like a piece of paper um, oh okay photo Ooh. yeah or like scan i like to i like to overlay noise myself Ooh. um I, I don't think i've ever tried specifically to overlay paper unless i was like painting a, a map or something but it is something Ooh. i'd like to try and maybe i'll start with true grits paper textures because yeah. i've got a few i just i haven't done anything with them yet which is weird because i love them so much but yeah um, definitely all righty so i am loving the imagery that you have going on i don't know if that's like a stack of crystals or a castle in between like in the middle there but i'm vibing with both of those things Thanks. yeah so. i mean honestly it, this is actually a sketch that i like reworked so this is something that i drew like the circle part in the mm -hmm. middle that was originally just supposed to be that and then i I was like looking through, I have like a folder of sketches that I like rejected in the past. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have this kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll like go through it because after a few years, like, or, or even months or weeks, you can look back at those and be like, why did I reject that? Or what can I do to like make that better? Mm -hmm. And it, it could be something that I see now that I didn't see at the time. And so this was one of those things where I, I pulled it back up and I was like, wait a second, I love this. So yeah I, I guess it's like a castle in the middle that's what i'm picturing um awesome i like it i am i'm vibing with it for sure um <laughs> i feel like it has like just like this great almost like a metaphysical um f like folk tale story kind of like metaphysical grim brothers totally. like totally. kind of yeah fairy like tale picture vibe. book kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. i'm starting to get into that lately like symmetry is a big thing mm. um <clears throat> these big kind of towers in the middle that makes it feel almost medieval mm -hmm. um I don't know I just love that vibe so that's just what I've been drawing a lot lately and I've been finding myself drawing trees in this style too where it's just sort of like teardrop shaped leaves so mm -hmm. that's what I'm hoping like the trees in the back will look more like these these like weeping willows yeah I guess that's what I'm gonna go for but we'll see we'll see what happens I kind of like when you said I wasn't sure if this building is crystals or a structure like a castle, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, honestly, me neither. <laughs> but <laughs> well, it could be like like Wizard of Oz vibe, yeah. you know, because it it's like a castle built out of some kind of mineral material, something flashy. So I mean, like you are the master of this realm. And you no. can decide if you want it to be that or not. So you, I think you should just kind of run with it. Um, just go with it, right? Yeah. I encourage everyone to do that with their sketches. I, I have some students and I'm always telling them like mistakes, like they don't have to be mistakes. They can just be like, you know, happy mistakes, happy mm -hmm. accidents, turn them into something good. So, you know. I agree 100%. Um, Monkey in the chat mm. says, I can see you play saxophone. I am very Lisa Simpson with it. Um, a, a bit out of practice, maybe, <laughs> but um, one of my favorite things uh, was That's awesome. was playing. Um, music is great. I, I was a I was a marching band geek, so oh my god, same. Yes, we are friends. I just I want everyone so. to take note of the friendship that is forming it's true. today. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I I went to a school that um they were like known for their marching band and they were super intense. And I was mm -hmm. like, what is this marching band thing? Cause I had never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. I was actually homeschooled before that. So it was like a huge. Same. What's Are you happening? Kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Okay. Now that is not a coincidence. That's crazy. That's weird. That's yeah. weird. I feel wow. like, okay. All right. <laughs> we have a lot to unpack here. I'm starting to become alarmed. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> set me up. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, so I was like, marching band, this is really intense. This is like music on steroids. Like mm -hmm. everybody is everybody's like military style in here, but hey, it was awesome. They were really good. We did like field shows and, and stuff. We did not march military, we marched baton. 
Um, okay. But but it's it's a it's a lot of fun. Definitely a a, a big creative outlet for me growing up, and I would say um, kind of influenced a lot of like gesture drawing and stuff for me because oh. the 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 color guard they are fabulous and they do right. like feats of acrobatics and strength sometimes that just right. blows my mind and i remember like sitting in the stands watching other competitors and like sketching and then uh -huh. um kind of going into uh do it my thing and then going back to drawing <laughs> so you played saxophone mostly not flute right like or was it i both? i played i played the flute mostly i marched oh, flute for okay. sure um and then i had a piccolo stuffed down the front of my uniform so that i could you know yeah 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 because usually like <laughs> it's funny because usually in the jazz world the saxophones play flute as a side thing mm -hmm. um or it's like the in the classical world, I find that the, the saxophones steal the flute players. So it's mm -hmm. like, depends where you are, but. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. Definitely a good time. Um, Carol yeah. says flute slash piccolo for years in marching band. Great times. It's yeah, it's it's a, it's yeah. a good time. Barry sax for me, says Abraham. I love it. Um, I, nice. uh, I have a reputation for hiding in a Barry sax case. I was very small in high school. Wait, and, you uh, or Abraham? Yeah, me, oh, okay. Me. No. <laughs> I was small oh. in high school, so I've I've hid in a couple of very sex cases to pop out at people. It's a good time. <laughs> it's a good time. Um oh my let's goodness. see. Uh a lot of a lot of musicians in the chat. I'm loving it. Great. Folks. You know what? Yeah. Where are these people coming from? They could be coming from my page, but I don't know. I yeah, can't... let us know um where all you folks are tuning <clears throat> yeah, in. Yeah, I want to know from... if anybody actually saw the post that I made and joined from there yeah. or i encourage some of my students to come on here because that would be you know cool yeah yeah let us know where you're but tuning in from if you are coming in um just as like an adobe live regular or if you're joining mm -hmm. off um a post from ava or myself and um also i would love to know because you are saying um eva that you are very inspired by the music you listen to as you dive into your work um, yeah. and all of that. I would love to know um, what kind of music you listen to and, you know, kind of what that process looks like, like when you become inspired. And I'd also love to know from you folks in the chat, what kind of music do you folks listen to? Do you feel that inspires your work? Um, and do you listen to music all the time while you're working? Or is it like a specific song that really just gets you and you're like, I got to make something I must yeah. create. <laughs> yeah, this is inspiring me. Um, yeah, I would say like electronic music is a big one mm. <clears throat> um, because it's so like, it's, like, I just feel like it's kind of pushes you forward. It's so motivating. Like it's so rhythmic and like, you know, almost predictable in a way, but mm -hmm. I like to listen to new music that I haven't heard before when I'm making new work because I mm. feel like it puts me in a completely different headspace that, you know what I mean? Like it's an yeah. unfamiliar place. So I feel like that's really good. I'm a big user of Bandcamp. Nice. Um, yeah, I like Bandcamp one because it, um, you know, it actually does fund the artist when you listen to the music. Um, mm -hmm. it, it promotes you to buy their music, which is important. Whereas Spotify is just kind of like throwing you a few pennies. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, in general, uh, I, th I would say electronic, ambient, alternative. Um, those are my genres. And I'm a classical nerd. So, you know, if I'm trying to fall asleep, I'll listen to some classical music too. Nice. My, my <laughs> classical music, although I am like, you know, like I read music and play instruments and all that stuff. I would say like my only classical music that I actually listen to is your girl can be found at any point in time listening to classical renditions of star wars music of course like that is like you know or or like heavy metal mm. renditions of star wars music like i yes. do i do love it but it's like a violins only uh han and leia like oh you know, yeah yeah, song. yeah so it's cool like just just like string instruments uh, a cello is to die for um so i do like I listening cello. to if I was to play oh, yeah. a string instrument, it would be cello for sure. Cellos, cellos make me cry in the best way. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's a very emotional instrument. Um, got yeah. a lot of folks in the chat saying they love listening to um, musical soundtracks. Um, uh, Symphonic Star Trek is fabulous. I have heard that before, Carol. Um, I would love to know if we have any like specifically very nerdy um, music 
loves in the chat. I have discovered recently something that really inspires me to illustrate fantasy um, pieces like Lord of the Rings style stuff. I listen to bardcore covers of Ooh. popular songs. Yeah. And my favorite right now is the bardcore cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit. That yes. is that is the jam. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so let's dive into it. Let's, yeah. uh, I would love to see the, you know, like how you kind of dive into this right. process. Let's get started. Okay, hope everyone's ready. Um, Alrighty, so I'm gonna get started here. So I have my sketch layer imported as a photo underneath and then I have my regular line work layer. Um, can everybody, hope you guys can hear me okay like this. I just moved my microphone a tad. Yeah, I can hear okay. you well. Cool. So I'm just going to get started by picking the brush that I want to use. So I usually start up by just playing around with a few brushes. Um, let's see here. This one is nice. Yeah, that looks like like slightly like a slight texture, but a little buttery, you know? Mm. Oh, this one's very textured. Um, Belgian Comics is always a good one. Belgian Comics is definitely one of my favorite. That one and like the sampled brush or the simple mm -hmm. brush. Um, yeah. Those are so good ones. I just found this the other day. I don't know if anybody uh, using Fresco or if I just like jumped on this really late, but um, apparently you can make straight lines by holding down if you go mm -hmm. to your input and you turn on the snap line um, right there, you know? Yeah. So if, if you turn that on, that's like a huge, um, that's just like helped me out a lot. So just wanted to point that out. Definitely a great uh, tip. Yes. And it also like snaps it according to, um, like your page, like it will, it will snap it, you know, to, to be like vertical or horizontal with your page. So. Uh, it was Just definitely saying. a great discovery for me as well um, for kind of for doing like exactly what you're doing here. It's just like, you know, I I feel like I'm a good artist, but if you want me to draw you a perfect circle or a perfectly straight line, you're out of luck. You know, I mean, I, who can <laughs> do that? You know, I, I've seen it happen and I'm convinced they're wizards and not regular people, <laughs> you know, because I, I struggle with it. But yeah, if you if you turn that setting on, um, you can draw a line. And as long as you don't like um, kind of move back and forth, like in a zigzag pattern and you just like do the straight line and then hold with that pen press, um, mm -hmm. it will straighten the line. And then if you keep your um, stylus pen tip pressed to your tablet, you can actually move that line and direct it in the direction right. you'd like it to go you can make it shorter or longer right it's, yeah there we go mm -hmm. um so it's a it's an awesome um tip and if you haven't tested that out um i would give it a try because it's very yeah. useful so i'm just like getting started um kind of warming up here how i'm going to be inking i just like to figure things out using something that's a little bit um more fluid or more mm -hmm. like something that's doesn't require me to have super tight grip you know what i mean like if i was to be inking maybe her face i would be like I, that's not really a great place to start mm -hmm. <clears throat> so instead i'm gonna start on these trees and um i'm just like testing how much smoothing i want because sometimes too much smoothing is too much if anybody here doesn't know what smoothing is it's basically like uh your savior when it comes to <laughs> digital mm -hmm. art lines it just helps you make like really nice um buttery lines that don't have any like jitter Mm -hmm. so um yeah when i first discovered smoothing i was like what have i been doing my whole life yeah i i didn't i didn't use it very much um like sort of in the beginning of my digital art adventure you mm -hmm. know um and once i discovered you know a way to kind of incorporate it it really does help um and I, I kind of do like you do i think where i start a project and i kind of kind of varies from day to day how i'm feeling but i will turn it up and turn it down and as you mentioned there is a such thing as too much smoothing because when you want to do yeah um, more detailed lines you know that have more elements to them and things like that sometimes the smoothing can kind of negate mm -hmm. that uh 
that detail. Um, so you do kind of have to play around with it. But once you find a sweet spot for smoothing, it is really great. Yeah, definitely. I'm still playing around with brushes, as you can see. Um, <laughs> but I think I, I think I was on the right track with this one. I just wanted to see what else there was. I'm always so curious, like, is there a better one that I could be using? But sometimes you just have to accept. Maybe. Yeah, and and I and I do that too. Especially, it looks like we use a lot of the same brushes in really? in fresco. Yeah, um, uh, Belgian Comics is one of my favorite. Um, it's kind of odd though because it it is a triangle. Um, I know, like point, uh, which it is when you're that, using like, it larger, it's odd. But yeah, small lines, it's it is really great. Yeah, it has that like calligraphy feel to it. Like I feel like I'm drawing um, with an angled brush in some way. Mm -hmm. But not quite angled enough to seem like a palette knife or something. Yeah. Um, so it is. It is. It's a. It's a good feel. I think yeah. for sure. Um, but it's funny how I. I do that same thing, and I would love to know if everyone else in the chat does this too when they're working at Fresco. But I'll do that, and I'm like, hmm, is there a better brush? And I'm literally cycling through the same three, four brushes that I yeah. cycle through every time. But I'm like, let me just try it for time 257, just to make sure I know that this is the one. Let me do this. <laughs> Well, I like to ink in, in fresco. Um, I, sh I feel like I should explain why I'm doing this in fresco, not in Photoshop, because yeah, yeah. you would think that you just do it all in Photoshop. But I don't know. There's something about drawing on the iPad that just feels more, um, just feels a little bit better um, mm. for me, at least when I'm inking. I think because traditionally I like to feel like I'm drawing on a flat piece of paper. So having my... Um, having my screen lied flat on the table is part of it maybe mm -hmm. um and yeah i've just gotten used to like drawing with this stylus with the with the ipad stylus a little bit more than drawing with my um wacom stylus nothing wrong with drawing with your wacom stylus mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but yeah i just find find that it's easier but it took me so long to get used to drawing digitally i don't know if that's similar for you yeah um i took me about five years because uh, I kept quitting. I, I was getting so frustrated. Yeah. Um, and I, I would love if you folks in chat are struggling, like kind of making a transition from traditional to digital, speak up in chat. Maybe we can, you know, kind of offer some advice and things for that, because I think that was the most difficult thing. And yeah. somehow maybe it's similar for you. Um, when I went from traditional where I was so comfortable into digital art, I, I kept quitting the digital side of things over and over again before I finally just stuck with it because if I felt so disconnected making that transition and it made me like kind of question if I could even draw. I was like, why don't the lines go where I put them and how do I, and you know, everybody else looks so comfortable in this. How do I do that i i yeah. personally think it's just about finding the settings that really feel totally. natural to you what do you think yeah i think it's about finding the settings finding the brushes like when i finally found the brush that i like mm -hmm. that that changed it a lot for me um and then also i think another one is like getting a screen protector that feels like paper helped a lot mm. um you know those screen protectors you can buy for your ipad that are like um like the frosted yeah kinda, yeah, yeah. Or I've also known teachers who put like a thin piece of paper, like tracing paper or something like over their tablet. And I'm like, that seems like a lot, but also I get it. Like I yeah. totally, I get it. Um, yeah. It's like whatever works for you. Um, and then I also think another big one is just like not giving up on it and practicing. Cause mm -hmm. the more that you practice it, like the more you will get used to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I can definitely um, like feel and relate to that though like because remembering how it was for me um i definitely felt like you know i i just wanted to stop doing it you know and i wanted i wanted to do digital art so badly i was watching um, a lot of tutorials and training and things from people like feng zhu and anthony jones and like right. all these people that did like because i i predominantly do like dark fantasy portraits and i like to illustrate mm. like creatures and monsters it's awesome your, of your work it's like amazing oh thank you so much i yeah, appreciate that incredible. Um, uh, but i i wanted to i wanted to do those things um and i i wanted to do it like them 
And I just, every time I sat down and I, I couldn't do that digitally, I just felt like, well, I, I defaulted back to the traditional drawing. But then I feel like while you can, I feel like you can do the same thing, traditional and digital, but I feel like the techniques are different. And I wanted to be able to do those digital techniques. So I finally kind of committed to it, but there was a lot of, um, I suppose, uh, self-consciousness in making the transition um right. and i hope everybody in the chat knows that that's not an uncommon thing to feel yeah that you're not alone in that and that i think a lot of people go through that so yeah and i don't think either that you're like you know necessarily uh you know doing a bad job if you can't mm. like get used to digital art quickly because to be honest I think it's important to do both equally. You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you're gonna do digital art, I think you should really stick to having some traditional um, experience under your belt, like on a regular basis. Mm. Um, you know, like constantly practice, mm -hmm. not constantly, um, but but constantly, like you know, practice working with a real brush alongside working with a, a digital brush. Yeah, it, it definitely is um, very useful. Um, I think this, for me personally, the specific way that traditional, like doing sketches every so often, um, and I probably don't do it as much as maybe I should, but for me, that value comes in. And I'd love to know if it's the same for you is when I work digitally, I have the opportunity to hit that you know, control Z whenever I want, I can free transform and I can move stuff around. Um, and I find that um, because of those wonderful tools, um, I do spend a lot of time in my sketch phase sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if I've spent some time doing traditional where I don't have those options, I find that I get into the habit of placing my lines with purpose. Oh, um, yeah. You know, because I can't control Z. I could put a post-it note, you know, over a part that I don't like and right. you know, sketch new, but it's, it's not really the same. So getting a little bit of that practice in, it does help you with, um, you know, placing lines with purpose. And, uh, I would say maybe getting it right the first time more often than you would if you rely very heavily on the control or command Z, which is not a bad thing, you know, like that's, that's the tool, that's the technique. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it, for me personally, it has helped me improve. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Just like accepting your mistakes and like accepting whatever you put down is like more permanent, you know, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's difficult. Um, and that's something that I learned through traditional art. So mm. that's why I don't know. That's why I like to sketch traditionally and then sort of import my sketch in digitally. Sometimes it's just more helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, Ali Fox in the chat saying me, I have a Wacom tablet, uh, but I just couldn't get the hang of it. So I bought an XP pen tablet. It's great, but I'm still not comfortable with drawing on the tablet. I think settings are the key. Yeah, get in there and play around with the settings. I think it's probably not the most glamorous part of like having a wonderful digital drawing tablet, but familiarizing yeah. yourself with it um, can can really kind of turn a, a difficult transition into a win. Um, Gareth says, been mostly di uh, digital since the early 90s. Wow. Wow. Um, I produce much more consistent work on digital than traditional, though lately I have gone back to doing dip pen inking. Wonderful. Oh, nice. I feel wow. like doing digital art since the early 90s, you were kind of doing it before it was cool. Cause that was kind of, to me in my brain, that's kind of like the dawn of like really, you know, the industry kind of diving in um, a little more to digital art you know, mm -hmm. especially for like concept art and those things. Of course, people were making websites, but like illustration, yeah. I feel like. You I'm know. so curious, like if it was like easier or harder back then to make mm. digital art, you know, like, because I feel like all the stuff you have to learn nowadays is so, there's so much to learn, but at the same time, it's like, there's so many options that you can do anything, but that mm -hmm. can also get really overwhelming, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. Let us let us know, um, Gareth. I'd love to know what kind of work you were doing in the early '90s and um, how you feel about you know making the transition back then versus um, the things that you see about those making the tradition or the the transition now. Um, I'd yeah. love to to hear about that. Um, Me too. Becca Smith says, I think sketching then scanning that into Photoshop really helped me get started slash comfortable in digital. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. yeah. Same. I used to do that all the time. I still mm -hmm. do that a little bit, but. Have you ever, um, Eva, used Adobe Capture? 
I haven't. What's um, that? It's really amazing. Um, and any chance I get, I love to share this. And I think you would probably love this specifically because you do a lot of traditional and digital work. Uh -huh. So Adobe Capture um, is a free app that you can download on your phone or okay. your iPad um, from Adobe. And okay. there's a lot of tools in there. Um, you can do things, for example, when you're walking out on the street, you can take a picture of something that's like colored in a way you love. It'll mm -hmm. bring the photo in and you can create a color palette from oh, that yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, put yeah, it yeah, into yeah. your library, you know? I think I've used it. Yeah, I think I've used this. Yeah, it's it's so like versatile and crazy. You can make patterns, you can take a picture of something and have it detect the font on a label of a oh my product God. somewhere. Yeah. Crazy. You can, um, um, there's like the Adobe text, like, what yeah. is it? Like, you can Adobe guess fonts the text. And, yes. Yeah, yes. and it, like, it'll give you um, Adobe fonts that are either like that font or very similar. Super mm -hmm. useful, especially if you see something like a, usually for me, it's product design on the shelves where I'm like, I just got to know, I need this color palette. I need to know the font. Right. Um, so yeah. great. But it has a feature that will vectorize your line art. So if you take a photo of your drawing, no way. Um, yeah, you, you can take a photo of it and then you what go into like its whole life? little editor where you can adjust to like clean up the lines and it's very, very accurate. Let me tell oh, you, super, okay. super accurate. And then it uploads to your library um, a vector line art that's perfectly clean and transparent. So if wow. you've ever been, I know that you felt this and I know folks in chat have felt this and I have where you do something traditionally and you're like, gosh, I wish I could just pick this line art up and put it in a Photoshop document just perfectly the way I drew it. You can do that with Adobe Capture 100%. Wow. That's such a great um, drop you just gave me. Like that's such a great piece of advice. Cause I mean, I usually use Fresco to like go in and trace my line work mm -hmm. if I want to make it di um, with their vector brushes, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just really, like I said, I'm a traditionalist. I like to feel the pen and like all that kind of thing. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I tend to use, um, you know, Fresco for that reason, um, their vector brushes, but this is great what you're telling me. Well, I, in, and I think that it's, you know, there's a there's a difference in technique and process too, because you really love to be hands on and kind of bring it in and 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 do this process that you're doing here, as you say. Um, but I would say that it's it's valuable in its own right to do it this way because if you can take you know if you can take the line art, make it a vector line art, bring it into Photoshop and stuff through Adobe Capture, you have like this perfect rendition. But um, what you've done here today is you've made this incredible sketch. Um, but it's mo more of a concept. And so even though you are kind of tracing it here and, and inking it in fresco, you are definitely elaborating on this yeah. concept as you go, which I think you could probably still do um, when you bring the line art in from Adobe Capture. But this is like what you're doing here is 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 like a unique experience, you yeah. know, of, of kind of yeah. continuing the development um and the progress of the piece during this step right um, you know so maybe doing it with adobe capture every time could save you time but i am a big advocate of doing what makes your heart happy doing what sparks <laughs> joy during your process and if this is the way you do it then that's just the way you do it you yeah know? i mean i guess it's just a matter of like knowing what you want to um knowing what part of your process uh comes first you know like mm -hmm. are you are you doing like the overall sketch first like i did like i'm doing here and then like kind of finishing it up digitally and like really fully rendering it digitally or do you want to sort of do all of that in your sketch stage do you want to go to final right right away yeah um and then do what you're saying like bring it into adobe capture and then you're done mm -hmm. um i used to do it that way a lot too and like i think you know, part of it is just like the decision making of drawing traditionally going back to that mm -hmm. is so much more difficult because once you make that decision and once you've inked it, it's done. You know what I mean? Like you can't go back. Yeah. Um, whereas yeah. here I can I can see what my sketch um, I can see sort of the roadmap for myself mm -hmm. here. What it could be. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, and we've got uh, some more really great comments uh, in the chat here. Um, 
let me see mostly drawing and photoshop gareth says so this is who we were um talking oh. to about doing digital art in the 90s mostly awesome. drawing and photoshop which ended up leading to doing photo restoration work oh very cool very cool oh. um and then was were, was it like a, a concept art sort of thing or like like illustrating for clients um in the early 90s or did you just gravitate toward digital art um as your medium um you know naturally when you pursued art because i feel like that is something that is maybe maybe a little less common for the early 90s um i think totally. that there are a lot of people who are very um interested probably or curious about it but in my head when i think about digital art at that time um i always think that i feel like it's something that people began to do who had jobs in the industry who were looking to kind of move into um, a new faster kind of pipeline workflow i don't know um so i'd love to know from your perspective as somebody who actually started doing digital art um at yeah. that time we have the og people in this uh in mm -hmm. this chat we have all the ogs yeah <clears throat> that's awesome. yeah i i started using photoshop um when i was 10 i think oh my god yeah my, my parents um are both digital artists oh um, okay that not by profession sense. but they were doing like um designing websites for people and you know doing graphic art um for folks as like a side freelance sort of thing when i was a kid so i was like sort of exposed to photoshop um earlier on uh though i didn't i didn't really get into like using it solidly for art until maybe 2000 and 10 i would say what about okay. you when did you really start like picking up photoshop? digital well yeah photoshop or like just like really pick up digital art as like a medium that mm -hmm. was substantial for you right yeah well, i started on my ipad at first and then after working on my ipad i i you know eventually went to get my master's mm -hmm. or start my master's didn't actually finish it but um in that first year we learned photoshop and that is like one of the key things that I came to learn anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is, this is changing my life. I had a great digital art teacher, shout out to Jonathan Bartlett. Um, he, it was awesome. And he taught me a lot about what I know um, in using Photoshop and getting comfortable, like drawing in Photoshop. That's kind of where I first started drawing on the Wacom and getting used to that it took me a really long time, but you know, he kind of, basically forced us with projects to get used to it and mm -hmm. eventually we did um yeah so nice. that's where i first learned photoshop and then um eventually i would sort of go back and forth between photoshop and traditional and my ipad and um then when adobe fresco came out i was like omg mm -hmm. and yeah so here we are yeah, Adobe Fresco coming out was like, it kind of transformed my my workflow personally, because before I was like mainly Photoshop because it's my bread and butter. I use a lot of the other programs now that I am kind of involved with Adobe Live um, and mm -hmm. have like, I think when you watch Adobe Live a lot, you start to get curious about the other programs. Yeah, and you're I, like, wait, you know, I could do this. Yeah, I could try that. Yeah, you know, um, and I've gotten more comfortable in other places, but Photoshop was like my main squeeze butter, for yeah. a long time um and then fresco came out and i would say it's about 50 50 now if not uh heavier on the fresco end just because it is so comfortable oh, and yeah. with uh cloud docs just being able to like work on this and then um yeah just open it up in photoshop on my desktop is That's i great. feel like there's yeah there's there's not a lot i would um i would sacrifice to not yeah. have this you know and so. i i saw that um when i got because i got this new ipad and i saw that um i was looking through like downloading my drawing apps again and everything and i saw that there's like a new um adobe or um photoshop app you can download am i like mm. linked to the game on that too or um it's been out since the previous max i believe um but there's also there's a there's a couple new things so we have photoshop on the ipad which is really cool we have illustrator on the ipad um which has been an that adventure be for me oh, yeah. um so like vector drawings if you have to do any hard surface stuff which it seems like you know some of your illustrations include a lot of um 
either of like very organic shapes or like more hard surface, sharp shapes, like kind of juxtaposed sure. um, together. That could be um, something that would be really awesome for you to kind of add into your workflow. But we also have um, Adobe Express, which I feel like is great. Um, you were just before the stream, you were making posts um, on your social media and stuff. And for me personally, I think I mentioned like that portion of this <laughs> job for me is a yeah, big nightmare. like yeah it's just difficult for me to do it's not something that comes naturally but um you might check out uh, adobe express if you feel the same way because it is really awesome just to create super awesome promo graphics and stuff for yourself and oh. then you can schedule posts which oh. is like yeah it's just like a, an amazing it's like a it's like a you know a freelance creator's dream um it's it's awesome so also a great one to check out um if you have not already yeah i want to try to get into recording my photoshop screen because mm. um a lot of the work is done in, in photoshop and like you know, I love that I could show like an iPad time lapse, but I feel like yeah. it only only goes so far because I do only my line work in my iPad and then I move to Photoshop for the color. So mm -hmm. if I could find a way to like record that, that would, I think, help my, you know, viewers understand my process. But also I think it would help my Instagram because lately I've been struggling with the whole like creating video content thing mm -hmm. um since like now video content is like what people want yeah um, well not what people want well I guess it is what people want but it's what Instagram wants us to do yeah um <laughs> and uh Instagram is is the people so mm -hmm. well um, maybe maybe I can give you some advice on that because I do a lot of time lapses that are multi-app um and I found that I, I just downloaded OBS, which is uh, it's free open broad broadcast software that um, you can download. And a lot of people use it for like streaming to Twitch. Um, and I was a Twitch streamer for a lot of years. Um, so I, it's something that I had. And there's a screen record button um, where uh -huh. you can just record the screen. And so if I do work in Fresco, I export that time lapse and save it. And then I um, jump onto my desktop and open OBS and I hit that screen record button and I turn the audio off so that it's just the video um, and I just work and mm -hmm. record it and edit it later, throw it into Adobe Rush. Um, sometimes oh. I do it on my iPad. I just throw in my clips and clip it together and throw my intro and outro in there. And then I have a, a time lapse for YouTube. So. Um, I think it's relatively easy to do it that way. I think that in the beginning, I really overcomplicated it for myself. And as you say, um, a lot of like video content is kind of the thing now yeah, where yeah. people want video content. And I'm by no means, you know, like I'm not like extra on the video content because it's it's difficult for me to do. But if you would like to to do some time lapses, I would check out OBS and see if it's just Ooh. easy and intuitive for you to do. OK, yeah, that sounds good. It's definitely, definitely a, a, a a not overly complicated workflow for it, yeah. and it, it looks great. So yeah, I was like um, recording. I was recording a class with Domestica last week, which was really exciting. Nice. And they were using OBS for my voiceovers, mm -hmm. so I got to use it a little bit there. And I was like, oh wait, hold on, how expensive is this? Because I would like this. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yeah check it out it's um it's a good it's awesome i would love to know like you know while we're on the subject um i think a like, great conversation to to have would be like kind of about this kind of transition where all of a sudden you know it's not i feel like it's not about like the art that you're posting now it's like you know people kind of want you to have like a TikTok or make youtube mm. shorts and all this stuff personally I don't come by that naturally. I, yeah. I really don't. Don't um, even get me started. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And I would love to know if there's anybody in the chat um, today who has maybe made that transition or maybe has been making like short yeah. form video content like that Definitely. Um, all along. I've been seeing it popping up more, like more and yeah. more artists. At first, I was getting a lot of posts on my Instagram like, guys, I don't understand why we're expected to make all this video content. And then all of a sudden those people are doing the video content and i'm like okay mm -hmm. all right okay i guess on, yeah on the bandwagon <laughs> yeah i i i kind of in my in my brain i'm like 
I will make a TikTok and I will do little tutorials or maybe I will do, you know, short clips of me just offering advice and, you know, like little 30 second yeah. think piece videos, uh, you know, <laughs> offering advice to people. I don't know. Um, but it's, right. it's difficult, you know, because I don't, you know, I became a, a an illustrator if I wanted to make video content, I would be like a video editor. Streaming's right. different, right? Because yeah. it's, it's live and thing. yeah, and you're just yeah. kind of kind of doing it. It feels a lot different, but um, it's a it's weird. Um, but you said you were making time lapses. Is that something that you've been doing already, or something that you're looking to get into? Uh, I do a few time lapses once in a while, um, mm -hmm. but mostly like after the fact, you know. Um, I don't like the thing I don't like about making video content is that um, you have to like stop and then like think about recording and mm. then get back in the zone and like getting in the zone is is a whole thing for me. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it, that 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 it's hard enough to get in that zone and then to get out and then step back in is just kind of um, inconvenient. But you know, I also understand like I'm not trying to say that um, social media is like out to get us or anything because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's just part of the job and it that kind of yeah. hit me this week specifically i was just kind of like i i was sort of upset about the whole not upset but i was um bummed out about the whole like my instagram has been very low in interaction lately even though mm -hmm. i've been posting regularly and i'm like what i know it's because i'm what not am posting. I doing wrong yeah <laughs> yeah and like i know it's because i'm not posting videos um mm -hmm. And so I was always really, I'm very stubborn in nature. And so I was like, you know what, I'm, who cares? I'm not mm -hmm. going to, you know, but now I'm like, you know what, it's part of it. I have to jump on the bandwagon. So yeah, if anybody out there has jumped on that bandwagon, let me know how it's going. Yeah. I'm coming on there for you. Yeah. Share with us, please. Um, Jack Watson uh, in the chat is saying, uh, I wish TikTok and shorts didn't feel like they take me so long every time I have no energy to do it. Um, and General Kenobi, one of my favorite people here. I'm a big Star Wars fan, by the way. And General Kenobi <laughs> is always in this chat making really? answers to our questions on the stream sound oh like Star Wars quotes. And it's, oh I'm God. living for it. So <laughs> <laughs> he says, you have allowed this dark TikTok Lord to twist your mind until now. <sighs> until now you have become the very thing you swore to destroy. <laughs> I love it. Wow. He lets me know not to try it, that he has the high ground when the streams begin. He says this is where the fun begins. So it's just like, yeah, it's good. I'm with it's you good. That. Yeah, it's just good I'm stuff. With you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, um, I think I will start a TikTok, but um, we'll be slow to it. So one of the things that you, and you just got me thinking about this, where you were saying, you know, you're posting regularly to Instagram. You're not getting the engagement that you want. And you know that it's because you are not making videos. And I personally, I want more engagement on Instagram as well. It's something that I feel like is, is honestly, I feel like all of my social media could be better, but mm -hmm. I've never really spent enough time kind of doing research on it mostly because algorithms give me a migraine yeah um, and worrying about it but is that something that you found that if you're posting more video content on instagram that it's supposed to kind of draw in more of an audience and boost your engagement yeah i do find that when i post video content like time lapses or um speed up yeah time lapses um or just in general videos of my process and you know some of my my work that I'm doing by hand, uh, I do find that it gets more engagement for me. Um, and yeah, that, or if I'm posting at a certain time of day, if I'm collaborating with someone, or I think I need to switch up my hashtag system too. I, mm -hmm. I've been doing the same hashtags forever and like it used to work back in the day and now it's just not working. So I'm just kind of lazy about it, but I need to, get more on it because I you know it's not like I don't have um I don't have a ton of followers or anything mm -hmm. but also at the same time I don't have um the amount of followers that would read uh according to like how many likes I'm getting if that makes sense so I'm getting the yeah. amount of likes that I would get if I had uh, maybe like a third of the followers that I have mm -hmm. um and it's hard as an artist because you just really have to like you know, I don't listen to social media. I'm not like sitting there counting how many people liked it, but 
it does kind of hit you sometimes when it's like, damn, I worked on this piece for so many days or mm-hmm. whatever, and I really liked the outcome, and it looks like it's not doing that great. So, you know, yeah, it's hard it's, not to take it personally. Exactly, exactly. It's very hard not to take it personally. Um, I had a like a really interesting experience um, this past couple of weeks with social media. So I, I don't have a lot of engagement on um, Instagram, um, and I'm more of all the social media that I use i'm more active on twitter just because i feel like it's more free form where i can totally just go and talk to people and post funny memes or whatever whereas instagram is kind of like a scrolling mini portfolio of sorts you know with some interesting things interspersed yeah yeah (laughs) um but i i recently finished um a like a large uh art job and they are I, i was working with college humor Um, I illustrated um, the new season of Coffin Run, which is like their Dungeons and Dragons show they do for Dimension 20. Yeah, it was like a crazy experience, really awesome. But I'm not used to people being active, you know, pertaining to me on social media. And so I, I had so many likes on all of my posts all of a sudden, and I did not know what, what to do with that. So I was like, kind of like breaking my back trying to figure out like should I be doing something to like continue this momentum Mm. um and with the project they're posting all of this work of mine and am I going to be expected to like continue posting like that to keep up the engagement is everybody going to leave when I'm done with the project like right like you say it's hard not to overthink it or when things start like dwindling down not to take it personally it's a lot of stress yeah personally um and, and you don't want to be making work for the app. That's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a that's a hard thing to get away from. And I didn't even know that I was doing that for a long time. But that's an excellent point is like, I got to make something to post to Instagram. And it's not something I will do anything with. You know, it's just like I made it for Instagram and I post it to Instagram. And um, maybe that, that I, I can see situations in which that works for people. But for me, I feel like I'm making so much work for me to do yeah when i do that um do you find yourself like kind of getting into a like i I know you said that you it you know was kind of you were kind of feeling some type of way about you know things every once in a while when it comes to social media but do you get into like overwork modes where Mm. you're just creating work for yourself (laughs) to do yeah oh that's a whole thing to unpack with me Mm -hmm. because i I went through a period in um, 2018, 2019, where I used to be like that, what you're describing, to like times 10. I used Mm -hmm. to make work all the time. I'd be working like, um, if it wasn't for clients, it was always something going for myself. And Mm. I mean, it was for love, obviously, but there was something in there, I think, that um, especially after I dropped out of... um, my illustration program that I was in, I I think I felt very insecure because I had dropped out and Mm -hmm. I um, was just like, okay, I have to, I have to do this. I have to do this on my own. I have to make the work. I have to, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think I was overextending myself. um, And then after I worked on a project for, I don't know if you ever heard of Tatsu Ramen. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's like a really good, really good ramen company. They're in LA now, but like they had a chain in New York and then they shut down. But long story short, I did a mural for them. Oh. Yeah, it was really fun. And um I it was the first mural that I'd done as a commission this large. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, very stressed out about it. Um and I was very sick that week as well. So I was taking a lot of um ibuprofen and like something to take my fever down um Mm -hmm. oh that sounds like a nightmare doing a mural with a fever exactly (laughs) yeah yeah exactly and you know um i don't think this person works there anymore but the manager at the time was kind of uh pressuring me to finish it quicker and i didn't have that much assistance Mm -hmm. and um long story short I injured my hand oh. um, and the injury went on way longer than anticipated. It lasted for about two years. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> and um, that was a whole journey for me. Like it, it forced me to re- rethink the way that I think about my work and the way that I um, mm. 
like why I'm making work because I think a lot of it was coming from insecurity and this feeling like I had to keep making just to like keep my career afloat when in reality like I was just harming myself by making it for the wrong reasons and um over overworking myself so Mm -hmm. it was a lot of therapy and it was a lot of like um taking breaks and like eventually I did get better um through physical therapy and through rest Mm -hmm. but it took a while just because I couldn't let myself rest you know I would be like I don't care if I'm injured I'm still drawing um and yeah so you know that was a whole thing for me so long story short I still have the problem but I'm I'm way better at being like I can put my pen down now because I I know what it's like on the other end of that Mm -hmm. and it's not worth it yeah I um I I really uh kind of resonate with that a lot um a couple things you said there number one is like the um kind of pushing yourself past almost like that point where you're like i don't you don't really want to work anymore but you're just like making yourself and create more work and kind of overworking yourself i feel like i i kind of applied pressure onto myself personally at the beginning of my creative career and sometimes still now every once in a while like just to to keep working to keep making stuff um and i feel like what i what i learned during that time is like yeah you can work all day yeah you can work seven days a week 12 hours a day um you could work seven hours a week or seven days a week like 14 hours a day like i was doing for a a long time which is just not healthy um and you can do all that and you can have 14 hours of work every single day seven days a week and burn yourself out or you can take a look at the structure of your day and try to formulate a healthy routine and stick to it, which is much easier said than done, I will point out. Um, But I think that you will have, like, as you said, once you've experienced being on the other side of, of that injury or that burnout or the consequences of overworking yourself, maybe it's Uh easier to see, but if you can develop, especially as a freelance artist, um, a healthy, daily strategy or daily routine that's working for less hours in a healthier way i think that you will find your artwork is of a higher quality totally. that your output and everything is much more positive and and better um, than working yourself into the ground thinking that you're not doing things good enough or not finishing enough you know um yeah exactly. so exactly yeah it was a hard lesson to learn and to be honest i'm not sure i could go through it again like yeah you know and i think i i had almost come to the point where i accepted if if my hand never comes back you know what i mean so um nightmare oh man total nightmare and i think like well you know part of it was that there was the pandemic and Mm -hmm. um it was, I was home all the time, so I was thinking about it a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I read this book. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this, but it's called The the Mind-Body Prescription. Mm-mm, never heard of it. And uh, it's a book about, um, basically, it, it's a book about how your mind and your stress affects your mental, or sorry, affects your physical health. Mm. Um, and I found that for me a lot, the stress of the pressure of not working, the stress of not being able to draw was causing me more pain than my hand itself. Mm. So, uh, I, yeah, like I had to change my relationship with work, but not to, you know, let's get out of the depressing mode, but long story short, don't, you know, don't overwork yourself and take breaks and stretch, especially inkers out there inking is really hard on your yeah. hand more Going than other like this with your hand you know it's constantly constantly so yeah. little yeah little tiny things for <clears throat> sure um for me uh what for like for me i i was looking into maybe more positive note is like looking into ways that you can organize your workspace to be a little more ergonomic um totally. for things like that i got myself a little um arm i wish i could show you but my mm. camera is kind of stationary at the moment but it's like a arm like for my elbow to rest on and it clips to, I have an L shaped desk. So it clips to the side of the desk on my side here. um, And it has a place where I can rest my elbow um, and I can move it up 
or down lower and it also rotates it like gyrates around oh my God. yeah and it was like 15 bucks on amazon or something like that and i oh got God. it and it, it really helps so like little tiny things that you can do for your workspace it makes so much difference um yeah that's huge you yeah. know this is uh, also a standing desk Oh, nice. I, um, oh, I want a standing desk so bad. <laughs> I would yeah. love a standing desk. What's that like? Do you, do you, <clears throat> do you find that you, I've always like wanted to ask everyone that I meet with a standing desk. Do you stand more than you sit or is it like an even balance? Or... Um, it's an even balance. I'm mostly like, I have a little rule for myself where I'm like, if I'm teaching, mm -hmm. I'll be standing. Mm. Um, Cause I teach about like three hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then I work you know, on my own stuff, whatever other hours I have left. So I feel like if I'm standing while I'm teaching, it kind of is like, okay, that's already three hours of standing time, which is good. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I use it pretty frequently, but I really like this elbow tip you're giving because I find that my, my elbow does sometimes support itself and that's not good. Um, mm. Your elbow should be like resting on something soft. I'm actually going to post the link um, yeah, into please. the chat. Um, and it is a little, it, it is a little more expensive <clears throat> than I remembered it being. It's about $40. Um, but that's this bad, is though. it right here and you folks can go and this is a very long link. I did not want it to be this. Long. Is it one of those Amazon right. links that are like five yeah, miles long? It's like, long? here's a novel. Here it is. Yeah, there you like, go. Wow. Um, I think I can sometimes with these links though, um, there's like a whole bunch of extra fluff at the end that you don't actually need to follow the link to the destination. So I'm just going Ugh. to cut that out and that should be right there. Um, adjustable ergonomic computer armrest um Sweet. there you go i hope that that helps um people it has definitely changed my artistic uh uh life for sure um it's a, it's a great one um we also have some great comments um coming in here from the chat that i'd like to touch on mm -hmm. um real quick so um wade was saying it can be like kind of you know when we were talking about a lot of the video editing and creating video content and kind of being this uh I guess like social media entrepreneur guru of sorts, if you're like a freelance artist, you know? Yeah. Um, so it can be tough to wrap your head around. I would rather uh, spend all my time um, on, on the work and less on the flailing of arms to have people see your work, but both are necessary. It can be tough. Um, and, yeah. and Jack is sort of agreeing um, with him. She says, exactly, wait, it's not where I want to spend my time, but like almost like a necessary evil. Um, and a lot of the, I think a lot of the sentiment is, is the same in the chat from a lot of um, folks, uh, you know who are creating art and then find that like social media has become such a big um proponent of like you know or component of the kind of getting your name out there um yeah. Yeah. i like i said i'm not i'm not a guru of social media um but if i can offer anyone some advice <laughs> i would share with you the journey i had when i first started using social media versus now and i still while i'm not you know i'm not twitter famous or instagram famous i have a decent following uh, or an amount of followers in both places but i wouldn't say the engagement is incredible i do i do get a lot of job offers and opportunities from social media regardless of what is great how active it is 100 percent. i i totally agree it's i get a lot of people messaging me on twitter asking me if i'm open for work and stuff which which works um but when i first started using social media i i you know fell into the trap and i was very stream minded because um i started streaming on on twitch and was like oh all of these you know, streamers, they have their Instagram following, they have their Facebook following, they have their Twitter following, they have all this stuff and all these things. And I, I want that. Um, yeah. And then I started looking at artists who were, you know, using social media. And I just saw like these very mature social media accounts that I, I would become frustrated with myself that I could not uh, imitate immediately right when I began, right. you know, um, kind of holding myself to an unrealistic standard. And I tried to create a piece of art and then post it everywhere and then create a piece of art, post it everywhere. So like each different platform of social media was like a strange variant copy of the other. Mm. Um, and I that's found what, the most- That's what I do. 
Yeah, it, it, it and it works. But for me personally, the most natural way for me to do it is I only chose now I've like gotten rid of a lot of my social media. I only choose to use the social media platforms that come natural to me to, me to use. Um, and I use them for different things. I post um, like finished art or interesting um, promos or like static images and things. Um, that's like, here's a piece of content that I just want you to look at, post that to Instagram, Twitter. I post a lot more whips. Um, I, I, you know, I talk to people a lot more there, um, and interact a lot more with my audience there. And then Behance is like a final portfolio for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Behance you know, is, I need to update my Behance guys. So don't, same. don't take it too seriously. Same. I think we have a link um, to your website, however, in the description oh, below. So if you folks would like to check out Eva's <clears throat> website, definitely do that. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I just think, you know, I think that everybody in the chat um, and me and you, Eva, <laughs> probably has gone through these periods of time where we're trying to break into this whole art thing. We're trying to figure out how this works. And I think a natural thing for us all to do is to look at what other people are doing and start kind of imitating that yeah. as far as their process. But I think that a lot of us too easily find ourselves being a little too hard on ourselves mm -hmm. through that process. You know, like I just got a Twitter and I don't have any followers. What am I doing wrong? Step back, <laughs> you know, take a, yeah, chill, take a, take a chill pill. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, uh, it's a difficult thing. Um, uh, Wade says, I was just going to say that Val, the harder I push, the less artistic growth. I think I see, um, big time, big time. Same for me. Um, yeah. Annika's in the chat saying hello. Um, it's There's good to see you, Annika. Some sort of weird, um, like unspoken rule happening where every single time that I'm looking for work, I don't get it. And every single time that I have work, that's when people start flooding my email. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. How? Um, yeah. Who decided to just start doing this now? Because. <laughs> yeah. Not, I mean, you, you know, got to pay the bills, but you know. Yeah. But it, but it's, it's kind of weird. I, and I have personally, I have like a lot of, um, no matter how many years I've been doing this professionally, I still have a lot of anxiety about like turning people down or, you know, mm. saying I'm not open for work or whatever. Um, how do you handle that? Do you have a little bit of anxiety when it comes to something like that, as you say, or do you, do you have a pretty good handle on it? Well, I have anxiety period. So, you yeah. know, spill, spills into everything, but um, yep. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I haven't actually, I'm sad to say I haven't gotten to the point where, I mean, I will say, <clears throat> I haven't said no to many projects like mm -hmm. projects that I find, you know, are good for my portfolio. I will, I'll take them on, but if it's a really low paying project and it's not going to go in my portfolio, mm -hmm. it really just depends how much money's in my bank account in order for mm -hmm. me to do it. Um, yeah. But I will, I have been getting a lot better at asking, um, asking for a higher pay because I think that um, a lot of illustrators and, and educators too, like teachers, um, they're just like used to just taking whatever comes and they're like, yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, that's, that's the pay. That's what they said the, the, um, budget was. So that's what it is, you mm -hmm. know? And a lot of times there, there is a higher budget there for you. So I, I encourage people to ask for more because it, it is sometimes 50% of the time I will get more than what I was initially given so yeah uh, or initially quoted so uh, that's something that I'm improving on but I I still need to work on like rejecting jobs because I'm one of those people that like I work pretty fast mm -hmm. um it might not seem it right now but <laughs> I, do oh, I think you're working very fast because you've got like a full page inked here and I would be very very precious <laughs> With a lot of this stuff, I can't, you know, so I'm, I'm actually very impressed. I think this is okay. a pretty good side note. Well, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, I work kind of fast and I think like that is a, you know, a double-edged sword because if you're like thinking about your rate based mm. on how fast you work, um, yes. that's not fair, you know? Um, I think Chris Doe said, uh, why punish yourself for being good at your job? For because... a second, I thought Christo was in the chat, and I was like, "What? No, did you freeze you? <laughs> where? Where? Hello? Haha. 
I, we are Eva and Val. It's good to see you. No, um, we've had, we've actually had him um, on Adobe live before and he has been in the mm. chat um, on a few occasions. That's cool. um, yeah. Uh, very knowledgeable dude. And um, he said something that really resonated with me. And that was um, when exactly, as you say, when you're formulating your prices um, and if you're, if you're basing all of your prices on how long it takes you to do the work and not all of these other important elements of the job, um, you are effectively punishing yourself for being good at your job because you go through, you know, all of this, you know, struggle and learning and, and, and process in order to get to the point where you can finish a project in a certain amount of time. Why should you then be making less than you were when you were just starting out simply because you're taking less time? Exactly. Um, and I think that there's a lot of elements that should go into how you price and it can vary from person to person. But I think that um, the value of somebody hiring you, number one is you. There's so many other artists that anybody could approach, especially now that so many artists are online. Um, but if somebody looks for you and, and finds you and wants you to do the work, then you are a valuable component of the process there. Um, I think that your, your time is valuable and you should charge for the amount of time it takes you. But also to keep in mind, you know, for me, I can do a project in a certain amount of time but I spent 15 years, 10 to 15 years, you know, not being able to charge very much or, you know, just working and trying to grow my skill in order to get to the point where I could do what I could do. And I feel like that's that, what you're charging you know, for. Yeah. You're charging yeah. for the, the history, the skill, the, you know, you being the person that's, that's doing the art, the time and effort you've put it into honing your skill. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I couldn't have put it better than he put it. And it, it, it like stuck in my brain the way he said that, you know, yeah. don't, don't punish yourself for being good at your job. If you're taking less time to do something. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I, I think that too. And, um, I also think it's uh, for the I mean he's in a he's in more of the design sphere of things mm -hmm. but um for the illustration community it's like don't just do this for yourself in your own bank account you know mm -hmm. in your own self confidence do it for the industry because yeah I think a lot of people are um just doing it because that's what they think everyone else is charging and mm -hmm. um or or they're just afraid to say no and you know they're afraid of getting rejected which you know sometimes they'll they'll ghost your email after they see that you know they you rejected their mm -hmm. their, their price and at the end of the day it's like they're just going to go on to the next person and ask them the same price and i feel like if enough of us say no to that low price they'll get the hint yeah. but if if somebody doesn't um you know start standing up for the community then who's going to you know yeah yeah. And I find it shocking sometimes like hearing, you know, not that I'm getting like these huge paying gigs, but sometimes I will hear like artists that I really look up to and I'll, I'll find out they're taking on jobs that are like super low paying jobs. And I'm like, I'm not necessarily angry or anything, but I am like, come on, you know what I yeah. mean? Like you should be, you should be charging more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, and I think like, as you say, I, I, you know, struggled for so many years and still do sometimes today, um, asking for a, a larger price, asking for more money for something. Um, I think the best way for me personally that I found to do that is to explain to them why um, I need to charge more and just say, you know, right. this is going to take me this amount of time. Um, yeah. At this level of detail you're looking for, it takes me more time than you know, these other projects. Yeah, it's yeah. just, this is what I, I really have to be paid and it's going to take this long and I, you know, I need to make a living. So yeah. here it is all laid out, kind of itemized so people can understand. Exactly. Um, but it took me a long time to get there. And I always felt, you know, so bad about doing that. And I think the flattery of somebody approaching me for work in the first place really blinded me yeah. to some of the poor prices I was being offered. Cause I was like, I can't believe that you want me to do art. And then I would like, you know, just suffer working a job that I should be paid like three, four and five times more for yeah. than I, than I am. And it, it's very difficult. Um, yeah. but you know, you, you made a really good point there. And that was, if not for you, do it for, do it for the, the art fam is that, you know, the art when, fam. yeah, do it for the art fam, you know, your, your metaphysical artistic 
family out there exactly. in, the, in the universe because when you when when you ask for an honest price and and granted i'm not saying like all of you folks need to start doing x y and z sometimes no, no, no. you gotta pay the bills hey you know? so you yeah. gotta do it you you gotta handle your business do what you gotta do but you know sometimes i think you know as we do start to become more confident as a community um naming certain prices or at least at the very least being more transparent about the process and what it means for us to take on the job to give that final product to um, a client. I think that it educates everyone as a whole to maybe appreciate um, creators a little more, um, to maybe be expecting to pay a little more money when they approach a creative um, for something, or to be a little more um, understanding and willing to strike a bargain or um, compromise on price and work uh, yeah. in future interactions, which I think can only be a positive for all of us. Yeah. So. And I mean, pay attention to the amount of detail in your work too, because, mm. <clears throat> um, you know, maybe an editorial price for something remains the same, but style by style, it's like yeah. that price shouldn't be the same for everyone, you know, like yeah. the amount of detail that you put into something versus the other person next to you doesn't mm -hmm. mean that your work is quote unquote better or val more valuable. It just means like literally this took me more time, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So if, you know, if the person fixing my kitchen sink is getting paid this much to fix my kitchen sink, how come I'm not getting paid on an hourly rate too, or whatever, mm -hmm. a rate that makes sense for how much work I'm doing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I'm glad we talked about this because uh, I think artists also need to be talking about how much they're getting paid more often because mm -hmm. it's kind of a secret right yeah, in, in a, a lot secret. of a lot of ways it's a secret secret but um i remember that is probably the most difficult thing when i first started to be um like just full-time freelance just kind of going for it and i'd love to see a show of hands show of hand emojis in the chat how many people <laughs> have experienced this and has this happened to you you ever get on Google and just say, how much do I charge for a drawing? And you get all these articles that are like super vague that oh never gosh. give you the answer. I know. They're never. Like... <laughs> never. And they're like, well, you do, you know, anywhere between like twenty and $5,000. I'm like, thanks, oh, Google. Okay. Gotcha. Um, uh, I, that was such a struggle for me is just finding out. And the, the only way I learned what I should be charging for my uh, my work is just to find other people doing work at the same caliber as me and hope that they will share the information with me. Like it was right. it was so hard. We got some hands in the chat. It's oh, just good. me. Yeah. Mm hmm. I have I've Googled that so many times. How much should I be charging? What should I be doing? What yeah. is life? <laughs> what, what, yeah. You know, I mean, also, like, how much do you? I, I also put this into to consideration. Maybe I shouldn't, but I don't know. Tell me what you think. Okay. I put, uh, considering how much I want to do the project. I know that, like, yeah. one of my, yeah. I can't remember what it was, um, but one of my, my roommate actually is a really, really great, um, illustrator. Shout out to Shin Yun Moon. I don't know if anybody knows her. Uh, it sounds familiar. I'm yeah. going to Google it while you do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, she was like, there's time, there's love, and there's money. Uh, yep. And if it, if it doesn't check off uh, two of those things, then at least two, then you should reconsider. Yeah. <clears throat> because yeah. I, I also think about how much I'm going to love doing this project. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. do I want to uh, draw you know 500 baseball players for baseball cards not yeah. really but if you pay me if, enough <laughs> if there's money and if i have enough time i might do it you know yeah yeah i i think that's a that's actually super valid i really do um because i think that i have taken jobs for um less money than it was worth um or for exactly as much money as as it was worth but i just loathed the job yeah. I just hated it and I drug my feet the whole time. But if it had been slightly more expensive, I might have felt like doing it more. And maybe, I mean, I don't, I don't, I just don't think that's a bad thing. I think that 
in, in, in any field, um, if you're doing something and you've got to work overtime or you got to do like the dirty jobs at work, somebody pays you time and a half, somebody, you know, hopefully somebody pays you time and a half to come in yeah. and do extra or to do the undesirable portions of the job. You get, you get paid more to do that. And I think yeah. that it's reasonable for that to be the case, um, in our profession. Yeah. I think that applies to any profession. I mean, I was thinking about that back when I worked coffee shop jobs where, you know, I mean, it, I at least it was the hours that I liked and I would have time after work to do my thing, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to think about that. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. How much time do I have for this? And I think that, you know, you want to do art for people and you want to, you know, build a name for yourself and you want to do all these things. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes the easiest way to think about, you know, progressing through this job is to really think of it in a, in a business way. And I think that that is a business savvy thing to do is to accept, you know, more money for, um, and, you know, maybe it's a, I think maybe you could chalk that up into it being more difficult. I definitely charge more money for jobs that are going to be more difficult for me to do yeah. to to manage if somebody really wants me to do that job and i think that um really not wanting to do like a certain kind of illustration or something can be thrown into that category you know it's it's you know like a more of a business decision um we have a lot of uh, comments in the chat again um okay. and i want to kind of go through them yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Sorry, I'm like constantly muting myself, guys. Just a FYI, I am sick, but I'm I'm good. We, I feel like this is this is a very relatable stream, though, because I was like this just a month ago. I'm sure everybody in this chat has found themselves in a situation where you're working on a project, you do what you got to do, you're feeling a little under the weather. But yeah. I, I just I appreciate it. I'm sure you don't enjoy being sick. But, I, yeah, but I'm, it, I'm vibing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like, I'm not at that stage of the sickness where I'm miserable. I'm actually, it's just congestion. So I sound mm -hmm. bad, but I feel fine. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Good. Um, Wade's saying, I usually provide options. If the client provides a number, I tell them what I can do at that cost. And I do that as well, Wade. I think it's excellent to do that. Um, typically, mm -hmm. I ask people, like, pitch me your project and I'll tell you, you know, if I can do it you know, give me your project, pitch me your, quote me your, your price that you're looking to spend. I'll tell you what I can do along those lines for the money you're, you're asking. And typically I think that's the best way to go, um, is that compromise and strong communication, you know, kind of sorting things out. Uh, Nikki says, I always have to remind myself to work with the people that I want to work with because they will be the ones to refer you to other people you want to work with. Yeah. You know, taking those, those clients um that you are like like really seeking and sometimes you don't always have that luxury right you yeah. like we were saying earlier you got to pay the bills sometimes and you know it's sometimes the the dream clients don't always come around but i think formulating your portfolio to really um communicate the kind of work you want to do brings those desired clients to you more often 100 percent. yeah you know? i'm with you on that nikki yeah um, um Melissa's in the chat, um, and I had mentioned that I uh, streamed uh, on Twitch for a lot of years, and Melissa is my good friend Lady or the Tiger from Twitch, who's probably oh. been watching me draw since like 2015. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's a, it's a joy and a pleasure to see you in the chat, lady. Thank you so much for being here. Um, meet Eva. It was kind of a kind of a, a design beast here. I'm watching this come together and I'm watching all of these shapes and stuff take form. And I have to say it's like wildly satisfying to kind of watch you do all these intertwining shapes and these things kind of, you know, flowing oh, yeah. through and around each other. And it's ooh, it's satisfying. It's just very good. Oh, good. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like I am going back on some decisions here and there, but it took me a while to figure out that top half. I'm not sure if I'm totally happy yet with the eyes, but we'll see what happens. I think it's very interesting. They're kind of like, especially on that one over on the, um, it's, it's my right, um, uh, but you have like more of that shadow that's kind of like yes. giving this like depth of the, the mm. weeping willow-esque leaves kind of hanging over and it almost looks like that eye is more nestled into right. the 
free, which I'm I'm really loving. And I don't know if that was your intention, um, yeah. but I, I am loving it. I, I, I want to really get like more. Of, I think I want to get more of that because originally in the sketch, I don't know if you remember, but I have like I had like kind of this more um, circular thing going on. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I want I'm not married to that yet. So we'll see. I'm just playing around, you know, guys. Yeah, a little experimentation, you know, <clears throat> seeing what feels best. And so this is supposed to be at the bottom here. I'm just seeing a little bit of um, asymmetry, but it's mm -hmm. supposed to be the bottom of an eyeball. So oh, I love it. You see I love it? it. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. great. So um, once I, I think a lot of stuff with my work. A lot of people say like, oh, like I didn't notice that until you pointed that out, or oh, you just find more things the more you look at it, and. Uh, I, I do enjoy like putting things in there that um, feel feel that way, you know, mm -hmm. like like little discoveries that you can make. So I you definitely to... have compartments in your work with things to discover for sure that I love. So yeah. I, I I do love it. Um, I, I, I now that you say that, I'm really seeing like it almost looks like the stem of an eyeball, kind of flourishing up with the hair and stuff like it really like just with My that goodness. mention yeah. it kind of does look like very intentional that way and i love it um yeah. we, we have um nikki uh, in the chat also saying i also had a wise mentor tell me to stop trying to conform to certain clients and lean into my weird to have the most fun um which is a great rule of thumb um i i think and tell me yeah. what you think about this eva I think that it's always great to add um, some skills to like the proverbial Batman utility belt, you know, where if you need to design a website or you need to do this and that, like you can pull those skills out of a hat and, and, and do that when you need to, if you need to take a job. But I definitely advocate for embracing the weird and just like kind of moving forward with your truest self artistically because you are going to find you know birds of a feather sort of thing like you are going to find a lot of people that really love your art um and they'll be the people that you want to work with if you're yeah. doing the art that you love the most i totally so. agree with you on that uh nikki is just hitting them all nail on mm -hmm. the head over here yeah uh, because you know i've had a lot of teachers and a lot of colleagues and a lot of uh, clients and a lot of just bosses and people tell me you know you should make your work more commercial you should make mm -hmm. your work more simple you should make it more understandable likable mm -hmm. um, and like I agree with that in some situations and it's a good tool to know how to do because there's times where it's very useful mm -hmm. but in general I just think like that's I mean that's if I'm honest, part of why I left, um, uh, dropped out of art school because I felt like I was being told that so much that it was starting to affect how much I loved making what I was making. Mm. And I was like, it's really important for me to preserve loving what I'm making, regardless of how much work it's getting me. Because yeah. it's, it's a longer road, but the road is more enjoyable. And at the end of the day, isn't it about enjoying the process more than it is at the end of the road you know mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah i mean i i think like they weren't wrong and they were just trying to help and i think that again they aren't wrong it's just a matter of like i had to do what was right for me and like making my work feel enjoyable i think is the most important thing and yeah. eventually those clients do come and like you you have a more close-knit community that way you know what i mean because mm -hmm. At the end of the day, your style is what people are are trying to buy from you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're they're literally asking for that one unique product, which is your style. Mm -hmm. and I think that's that's more valuable than any um, you know big job you might get because you have a more commercial style. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. No, yeah, I I think that that's. Um really really important i think i definitely resonate with it and and i it's something that i experienced a lot of too because for me i like to do portraits i love to paint yeah. portraits so much that yeah, is my favorite your thing portraits is so good i thank you so much it is that's like my my joy is like illustrating a character um and just kind of showing you this is what 
they look like here it is and and doing something interesting with that and i i do some a little bit of you know environment and stuff i've been trying to do like more landscapes and things um i really have decided i love uh prop illustration like you know game items oh, video nice. game items and stuff i just i love doing that um but I, I did experience a lot of that like early on in what I was doing. People were like, well, what are you going to do with this? You know, you can't, you, how are you going to sell this? Were you going to put this on a t-shirt or whatever? And I was like, yeah. I will make a desire for this in some way. Like, cause I, I spent right. so much time listening to people tell me that it wasn't formatted in a way that was going to be successful for me. And I was like, well, what if I put it on a button? What if I make it a sticker? What if I make it a mini poster or postcard or something i could do something with it it's just maybe i don't have to do with it what you feel is the necessary next step for it um and i feel like that's kind of how people get started really kind of trucking down that road to discovering their own way of things and making their own style and just exploring themselves and not necessarily forcing themselves into the the box of doing it like everyone else. And it right. is an immense pressure trying to market and create products after your, uh, out of your work. It, it's for me, oh. it was a hard experience and yeah. it was just different than what I ever really wanted to do with my art. Um, so that was, that was hard. Um, Rob has a great question here. Um, Eva, do you find your work is more local or more widespread um, in an area? That, how do you stretch out of a local market? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think that, um, I, I mean, I definitely send a lot of the work that I get is through my own outreach. So mm. I will target and do a lot of research on like different publications or um, art directors or whatever, you know, um, mm -hmm. companies that sort of tend to hire a certain style. I will uh follow artists who are similar to me and kind of see what they're up to and bookmark things mm -hmm. um so i would say like a lot of it isn't focused on a certain location um but that being said i do live in in brooklyn so like there is a lot of stuff happening here that does help me as far as networking goes you know mm -hmm. going to events meeting people in person <clears throat> um and you can actually see like on Instagram, something that's really useful. And also on Squarespace, which is the website that I use and on uh, MailChimp, which is my mm. newsletter platform. You can see who's clicking on your stuff and where they're from. Mm. So uh, you can kind of see like, oh, most of the people who are looking at my stuff are from this area. You know what I mean? And that's kind of useful. Um, if you're trying to get out of your local, you know, the place where you're usually working, Getting, getting your work from locally if you feel like that's limiting you um i would definitely recommend uh starting a newsletter or starting some sort of like portfolio outreach mm -hmm. and sending your work to people whether it be digitally or physically um uh, going to more you know conventions uh places where people are traveling in to go there if you if you have the opportunity i mean i know not everyone can go to conventions mm -hmm. uh going you know being on live streams like this is a really great way to meet people um yeah. but just like meeting people outside your area if that's what you're trying to do because i find that those in-person connections are so much more valuable than uh the online one especially yeah. knowing how instagram really has its pulse on everything lately yeah um yeah. Um, I think kind of getting creative with how you offer services to a client is really awesome too, because some of us, you know, the creative medium that we're working in um, does not really lend itself to remote work. Um, but I, I discovered a mural artist and I'm forgetting his name at the moment, but maybe I can search through my following uh, list on Instagram and, and, and post it for you folks later. Um, He's a mural artist and uh, he wanted to work on murals, but he, at that point in time, couldn't travel and like do a mural for people. So he started uh, advertising that he'd paint you a mural. And if you sent him the dimensions of the wall inside a building you wanted a mural on, like for your cafe or whatever, he'd send you a vinyl wall wrap. Wow. So he just do do the mural and then you you get this big printed thing. And so a long as your mural. measurements are, yeah, precise, you have his mural work and you you wrap the wall and then it's there and it's 
you know, he he I, he kind of framed it as like kind of an all weather, like durable sort of yeah. thing, you know. And I thought that was really creative, you know. Like now he can do remote murals on the other side of the country or in another part of the world, um, just by you know kind of reformatting how he offers his creations, which I thought was great. Um, I want to also we have a we've had a few people pop in we've got a lot of people in the chat talking about very helpful books um like the guild mm. handbook and um news school and uh we've got the scientific illustrators guidebook yep. um graphic artist and guild handbook 16th edition very cool um we also have uh in here a new friend um, that just popped in that wanted to just say hello. Um, this is uh, Tavo, who says, Hi, everyone. Great talk and topics. I'm enjoying it. Meanwhile, I'm drawing in traditional media. Many greetings from Mexico. Welcome oh, in, nice. Tavo. Hi. Yeah, it's good to meet you. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. By the way, just a heads up um, for you, Eva, uh, we have about 15 minutes left. Perfect. Um, so I just want to kind of give you a heads up so you don't feel um ambushed once we start to wind down um later on so about 15 minutes um if anyone has any more questions um there's been a lot of questions so i'm sorry if it's taking me a little time to get through them but i am trying to get to every question um in the chat but now would be a great time to post um your questions just so that i have time to see them and kind of work them into um our discussion here um so if there's anything you'd like to know um specifically uh eva is there anything that you think that you would like to i mean no, we're answering questions and we're kind of letting this conversation flow naturally but is there anything that you'd like to offer maybe some things that you've kind of learned throughout your your career and your art journey that you wish you knew sooner or just something you'd like to to tell us all about how things have been for for you going on this adventure yeah, um, I think a, a good piece of advice I could give is um, to focus on the good work you make as the work that you're showing, uh, mm -hmm. like on the same conversation that we were talking about, kind of this conversation and the previous one, mm -hmm. uh, putting those together. It's like you want to focus on uh, putting your best work out there. I think that's a big one. I was more focused on making work, making work, making work, mm -hmm. and I wish that I had just sort of slowed down <laughs> mm, yeah yeah um yeah so i would say like slow down and enjoy like don't don't sort of feed off of the highs and you know get sunk down by the lows of this industry because there are a lot of highs and lows and mm -hmm. uh at the end of the day it's like you're still gonna wake up in the same bed and you're still gonna be checking your email in a few weeks and mm -hmm. you know maybe work is flowing in right now and it feels really great, but you know, it, it's a constant. It's an ebb and flow. It's an ebb know? and flow. And like, just sort of not, I, I'm very like emotional and I'm very like, all of this is very personal for me. Mm -hmm. So that's good. But at the same time, I think that I wish that I have had had more of a logical level head about things and not been so, you know, like this is going to be awesome. And it's going to be, you know, I'm going to, you know get so much work because then it's like you're gonna get let down you, yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. uh just enjoy the art making process you know mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah I, I i agree i think that you know like you said specifically um kind of like riding the highs of like the attention and stuff and then not really being mentally or emotionally equipped or prepared for the lows because it is an ebb and flow i remember so many times like going through these periods of time where i would suddenly start to get a lot of traction and a lot of um, attention on social media um i would start to get a lot of you know likes and follows and everything and i would think to myself for some reason i'm like okay this is it this is where <laughs> I it's finally, <laughs> I finally soar into the sky and it's usually like a trend or something that led people to me. And then it starts to fade. And I'm like, what have I done wrong? Um, and now I think I'm more equipped for it. You know, now every once in a while, you know, like I was kind of explaining, you know, newer jobs that I've been working on that like brought a lot of engagement that was really shocking to me. Um, things like that will happen, but I think I'm more equipped now emotionally to deal with it and not take it so personally. But I, I definitely would say that's something that I wish that I really had somebody tell me or talk to me about um, Eva when I first began, because it was hard. 
you know it was yeah. hard yeah. it's not like drawing in your sketchbook and showing your friend like look at this thing i made i'm proud of it it's like you draw it and then you post it for the world to see and it's 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 different it's beautiful and wonderful but it's also a little nerve-wracking <laughs> you know that everyone sees it and you know you want to do well and like you said earlier like i spent three weeks working on this project and i post it and it gets less likes than like the random sketch i did in 20 minutes from yesterday how is that possible and you know is no. it not good or you know um but knowing that it evolves and changes and 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 all of that i think can help you feel a little bit better about the ebbs and the flows and the changes of of things um totally and uh yeah definitely definitely works for me um i 100 percent resonate with that as uh something to think about early on um uh, it's not easy to learn it the hard way <laughs> yeah i was wondering is this recorded like oh yes oh, oh yeah perfect 100 okay, percent because um, I would love to go in and like, you know, see who's in the chat and, you know, thank them for being in the chat later. I don't think the recording will have our live chat um, okay. attached to it, but uh, there will be um, a recording archived here on Behance and also on our Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Um, Perfect. so you can go back and rewatch the stream. I was just thinking to myself, like we've gone over so many really great, I think I very relatable topics, um, in this stream. And I think I'll share the VOD, like just to my social media afterwards so that people can dive into it. Cause I feel like, I feel like I've really learned a lot from you and oh. learned a lot just in this short Likewise. amount of time about like, I, I don't, I feel a lot less alone than I did two hours ago, oh, yeah, which is exactly. great, <laughs> you know? yeah same like, and this is also going by so fast it's like, i know it oh does God. slip by doesn't it um yeah how much do you do this often yeah yeah i've been i've been streaming i mean i mean I'm, I, I would say i stream less than than full-time now but i've been a full-time streamer since 2014 <clears throat> um and i was doing streams like i've done some streams that lasted 12 hours where i just did like really really large uh and they were like for events and things but you know streaming for 12 hours and um like doing um creative streams gaming streams and whatever and then i transitioned to doing um more photoshop stuff for adobe but i feel like i'm my second home is kind of in front of the camera doing creative stuff um but but wildly different than creating video content like yes. <laughs> not the same not, not the same the same not the same at all um no. for me so weird but yeah i do i do a lot of um a lot of stream stramming uh yeah this is my first time doing this with adobe it's really fun i'm glad you're having such a wonderful experience it's yeah. heartwarming to me you i'm glad i was sick completely forgot that i was sick oh perfect you know magic yeah. <laughs> magic i also think it's cool that we like sort of discovered that we are like weird mind twins today we are. Wait, that so you happened were, you were homeschooled yeah too? i was homeschooled for most of my most of my schooling i went to a lot of schools growing Same. up i went to like 20 schools wait okay not that many on my yeah <laughs> i went to, went to a lot of schools because i moved a lot but a lot of my um schools were like different homeschools and, and charter schools so okay. a lot of homeschool um i play the flute and you play the flute. That's why uh, you're so easy to talk to because you're meet, used to meeting new people. Yeah, and and honestly, I feel like I feel like meeting meeting new people. I'm I'm used to it because I'm streaming a lot and I get to hang out with new people. But I also like I feel like as a homeschool kid, I'm always super pumped to meet somebody new. I'm like, oh, new person. It's just my mom and dad and brother here. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think. <laughs> I do think also the advantage, there's advantages and disadvantages, I think, um, to the homeschool situation. But an advantage that I found was that you're more comfortable at a younger age talking to different age groups because yeah. you're stuck with your same age yeah. group, you know? I definitely felt a, a, a completely different freedom of expression creatively, um, uh, mostly because I, you know, I feel like when you're around more people, uh, then you're you're open to more judgment of what exactly you're creating. So I feel like I got to right. you know express myself a little more. But then some people don't have that issue going to a different kind of school, you know. But for my for my personality specifically, I felt like I was you know free to express some of that creativity a lot uh, more more freely. Um, but yeah, so so homeschool, flute, marching band, 
We're in marching band. Uh, mm -hmm. You you mentioned that you um, left art school and then went to kind of do freelance on your on your own. And I didn't leave art school, but I did leave school to pursue. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, I, I was going, I was studying forensic anthropology and I was like, you know what? I do love the show Bones, but I think I just want to draw. <laughs> I think I, like, I don't want to draw pictures. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, um, so a lot of similarities. Um, I, uh, I think we've become friends. Um, Definitely. It's like a, like a stepbrothers movie moment. Um, <laughs> I'm waiting for you to tell me that your favorite dinosaur is a velociraptor. What is your favorite dinosaur, by the way? We got to hash this out in mm -hmm. the last, we got about five minutes left. I'm going to need to know your favorite dinosaur. Oh no, five minutes. Oh no. Uh, yeah. It's okay. No worries. I'll finish this up in Photoshop tomorrow. Woo. Um, years. My favorite dinosaur? I don't know enough about dinosaurs to know what my favorite is. Which one looks the coolest? And if you don't know I, its name, you can describe it to me okay, and I'll I like probably the know it. Ones. The pterodactyls. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty scary. They're pretty cool though. I just, I remember seeing them in the movie for the first time. I was like, not a sweet bird at all. Not Ooh. a sweet bird. Not a sweet but bird, I think but that's very what, cool. Like, chickens come from, right? Um, chickens actually do not come from the flying dinosaurs. Chickens come from the non-flying dinosaurs. Oh, really? Um, yeah, which is kind of crazy. Oh. It just makes them, makes them fancy. Um, I think they, they kind of evolved. They were like, you know what? We're going to be exactly us with wings, but <laughs> ridiculously smaller. Um, and we're going to eat seeds. Yep. That's, that's the move. That's the jam. We're just going to relax for a couple millennia. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so we got about, we got about five minutes left. Um, okay. uh, yeah, Eva loves pterodactyls. I love lost raptors. My... Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm just Richard wrapping Wells up my line work here. Nice. Nice. I'm loving it. it so much. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to like figure out my thick and thins here. Like which lines should be thinner, which ones mm. should be thicker and eight. I tend to make my thicker lines in the stuff that's in the foreground, but um, mm -hmm. in the thinner stuff for the more detailed things like um, the hair, the, the fire, yeah, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, so I'm just thickening up some of the other stuff here. Okay. Yeah. And then tomorrow, maybe we can talk a little bit, give everyone a, a brief uh, trailer preview um, of your, your thought process for tomorrow you said that we were going to be um kind of transitioning into doing some some coloring and and blocking that out what is your process gonna entail exactly. for tomorrow yeah so tomorrow i'm just going to talk about how i use photoshop for color mm -hmm. um and for some extension of my inking here i i do use some some inking stuff in photoshop so i will be uh, starting off finishing this in photoshop with the inking mm -hmm. and then once i have that uh, separating my my line work from my background and um, then I'll be flatting my color like putting in the flat color mm -hmm. um, and then I will be uh, putting in like basically rendering it so it's a whole process but you I'm know so what pumped. <laughs> it's gonna be great and I'm just trying to figure out if what I want to put in this spot because you know me I can't have anything empty uh, yeah okay. yeah you you really so Pack just quick in. in the in the last couple of minutes that we've got here um i already was familiar with eva's work before i was notified that i could possibly host her for the stream um mm -hmm. i've got a bunch of her pieces in uh, my various inspirational pinterest boards oh um and if you have not already clicked on that link uh to her website and taken a look at her portfolio i sincerely hope you do so that you can discover why i have <laughs> eva's work in my inspo boards Aww. it is so fabulous and she's not kidding <laughs> It's so nice. She says that there's there's no empty space, um, and uh, I think it's it's beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of little compartments and like, oh, it's almost like I feel like your paintings are like a static pop up book. Ooh. Like there's little compartments <clears throat> with hidden things in there, and if you zoom in and you look closely, you find things. And I think that people can look at your pieces, and each of them could experience it in a totally different way oh for gosh. different reasons. Stop. And it's just, it's an adventure. Oh, Eva, you're great. You. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh my God. I've had so much fun. I'm assuming that this is like wrap up time. So I'm yep, going to stop yep. fiddling around, but 
coming this to is, a close. It's probably a good this is probably a good place to close anyway. It's like kind of yeah. done with the major line work and then we move on to the detail. So yeah. yeah. I, I think this is an excellent um, place to to stop. Um, and in our last few moments, I just want to say um, to everybody in the chat um, who uh, has been here watching and hanging out with us, thank you all so much for yeah, joining. Thank you. Yeah, this has just been so much fun, um, so much input and questions and answers and 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 sharing in the chat, um, as well as from you, um, Eva. This has been a blast, and I know that I did gush about your amazing website and where people should go find you. But where else can folks um, take a look at your work or maybe get in contact with you or, or message you if they wish to online aside from your website? Yeah, definitely. My Instagram is where I post most of my work. Um, I also post all that onto Twitter and I have, I don't have a TikTok yet as we talked mm -hmm. about, but I will yeah. probably get one soon. Uh, Make the plunge a... with you, honestly, because <clears throat> yes. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> uh, I have a YouTube with like some tutorials on it, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that's a big one. But yeah, I would definitely check out Instagram first. Okay, awesome. Well, check yeah. out her Instagram. We'll get those links in the chat. Check out her website um, and stay tuned because we have more excellent, amazing content coming up for the rest of the day. Um, the don't, so don't go anywhere um, and tune in tomorrow yet again um, because Eva and I will be back at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time um, with part two. Um, and we want to hang out with you guys again. So definitely come on back. Um, but until then, we will see you folks next time. Adios, Yay. everybody. Bye.